the organ as it was had come to the end of its life in terms of what rolling maintenance could do. It would become riddled with faults and leather work was aging and failing. And it was time to really think again about what the needs of the cathedral were in the 21st century. The organ was fit for purpose for the needs of the cathedral in the 1940s. But those needs have changed, the use of the building has changed, and the way that we actually use organs and uh, accompany the liturgy has also changed in some respects. So it was time for a rethink, and in terms of the mechanism of the organ, it was really time to just start again. And what we've done in this major rebuild, really the, the organ is new mechanically, is that we've actually physically turned things around. So the organ now speaks both east and west, but with the same voice. So the way in which the musicians will be able to accompany the choir and accompany the liturgy will be very different to how they had to do it with the old instrument. An organ project like this doesn't just happen overnight. It's a, a very long process from the first initial planning to actually getting to the stage where we are now of the organ beginning to make sounds again. But this process has been several years in the making from the initial concept of the new instrument and what it would look like and what it would sound like and how it would be laid out. And then the design work that goes into all of that. Uh, everything that I'm sitting around here has been designed purely for this instrument. It's all bespoke. And then the organ has to be built. So the organ started to be built two years ago in our workshop in Durham and then it has to be brought to the cathedral, so the old organ was taken out, the new organ was brought to the cathedral and installed inside the organ case, which is so iconic in this building. Now we're in the final stages of the organ project, a project which has taken almost a decade to come to fruition. So now we're in the voicing process where the organ's been installed and the organ is being voiced and that process is unique to organ building. The process of voicing, the first thing we do is we tune all the pipes up, get them all to the correct kind of pitch, and then we have to listen to every single one of the pipes in the organ to make sure it speaks correctly, uh, to make sure it's not too loud or too soft. And for every stop of the organ that the organist pulls out with the console, there's a pipe for every note. So for every stop, there's 61 pipes and there are about a hundred stops on this organ. So that's a lot of pipes to have to listen to, and it's all done by ear. We have some technology which allows us to sit in the building and actually listen to the organ where the people hear the organ, um, rather than where the organist sits, which is often the worst seat in the house. We listen for all of those tiny little details in the pipes to get them just right so that every pipe is doing what it should do as a musical instrument in its own right all of the pipes have to work in perfect harmony. We are very privileged to work in a great number of cathedrals and very important and historic churches. Every organ and every building is unique. They all might share some similarities, but each one is unique. Every organ is bespoke to the building that it's built for. And this organ, of course, is no exception. In this organ we have about 60% of the pipes from the previous instrument and then 40% of the pipes are new. The whole concept of the new instrument was to retain the best of the old organ, which was of good pedigree, and to build a new musical instrument around that. So the new pipes in the organ, hopefully when you're sitting listening to the organ being played, you won't be able to tell what's new and what's old. The most important stop in the organ is the building in which it's in. The building has the ability to make or break an instrument and the acoustic in the building dictates how the organ will carry and so that plays a factor in how the organ's laid out and how loud the organ has to be in order to fill the space as well. And this is a, a vast space to fill with sound but the new organ will have no trouble filling that space with sound and leading congregations but also having all of the right colours to accompany the choir in the choral music, which is such an integral part of life here at the cathedral. One of the most important 
aspects of any project like this is the people who make the project and of course the welcome that we've received here at Norwich. Everybody is so excited about the new organ. The organ's been out of action for so long now when it's all complete. It's quite an emotional thing really but of course we'll never lose touch with the organ. One of our tuners will continue to tune it and maintain it and keep everything on the straight and narrow. It's all brand new and brand new things take time to settle down so they'll deal with all of that. Like all of the projects that we work on we pour our heart and soul into what we do and it really is a labour of love. We love what we do, we put ourselves into it and when we walk away at the very end of the project we'll be leaving part of ourselves behind here. But of course we won't forget about the organ here, we'll hopefully be back for the opening recital and, and all the celebrations around that. And of course coming back to hear the organ with fresh ears after two months of voicing and think, gosh yeah we made that happen, can be quite an emotional thing. Um, and I'm not ashamed to say that I've been to opening recitals of other projects very similar to this one and shed a tear or two because it is emotional, you do leave part of yourself behind.